Hi, I'm Mike Stish. I'm with Hackaday.com, and I'm here at the Mauser booth at Electronica 2014 in Munich, and I'm with Grant Imahara. Hi, Grant. How are you? I'm good. So uh, um, most people are, are familiar with uh, your recent career, uh, but I, I looked into some of your past, and I was happy to find that your first job out of college was really interesting. Uh, what did you do? <laughs> I was an electrical engineer. I worked at the THX division of Lucasfilm in consumer electronics. I would blow up loudspeakers, amplifiers, and surround sound controllers. So did this? Uh, did you have much experience with this when you were getting your degree, or, or was it mostly uh, learning on the job? Uh, well, yeah, I, in my junior year, went and became Tom Holman's uh, research assistant. And Tom Holman is the TH of THX. So oh wow, that's fantastic! So I, I worked in the sound department at the cinema school, and you know Tom would give me papers to read. So I was familiar with that whole world. And uh, I understand you've done a lot of robotics builds as well. Yes, both personal and professional. It's been, you know, I, I think for me it's been a lifelong love affair with robots. And uh, what's your favorite part of robot building? Bringing life to something that you know it's it's really neat. You can create. You, well, you, you give the illusion of life to something that was inanimate before, and that's, it's super fun. Yeah, sure. All right. Hey, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, your new partnership with Mauser. When did it start, and uh, what's the scope of it? You know, the funny thing is, uh, a couple months ago, my agent came to me and said, look, Grant, we have an offer from an electronics distributor. I don't know if you heard of them. They're called Mauser. I'm like, of course I know Mauser. I've I've been a customer of Mousers for over 20 years. Right. So when that partnership came up, I'm like, this is, this is great, this is awesome. Because I'm an engineer, I speak the engineering language. And for this partnership, which is empowering innovation together, it's all about getting the tools into the hands of the design engineers. And my fan base is now having been on TV for 10 years, it's young people who grew up watching the show who are now graduating as engineers. And so yeah. they're like, oh, I recognize Grant. I need parts. I need design tools and development boards. Oh, well, I'll order from Mouser. So it's a, it's a great partnership. It works good for both of us. Well, I really like to hear that, you know, um I think there are far too few people uh, that look at electronics and say, I want to know how that works. Yes. And um, really, it's just getting their foot in the door. It doesn't take that much to learn about it. And, and um, I, I'm wondering if you can share maybe some of your earliest experiences uh, with playing around with electronics and maybe um, beginning to learn more about them. Oh, yeah. You know, I, um, I started out playing with Lego when I was very young. And I always say that Lego is like the entry drug to engineering because it's a system. There are rules, but it's also modular. So you can take those rules, you can solve problems by, by configuring things in different ways, which is essentially what engineering is. And from there I progressed to taking the wheels off my Hot Wheels, <laughs> so they were just hot, and then um, taking things apart. And then I got an electronics uh, experimenter's kit. And the very first thing, the very first thing is let's sort resistors. <laughs> the boringest thing I could possibly imagine. This is before the whole maker movement. Right. right? This is before all the resources that kids have today if you're interested in electronics. But by the way, it's an awesome time to be a kid who is interested in making things and electronics. Absolutely. But the very first thing was, let's sort of resist. Oh, that's stupid. Let's go to lights. Lesson number two is, okay, well, we've got an LED. I'm like, awesome. <laughs> I hadn't sorted the resistors, so I was like, oh, just, I'll just plug it in. Blew out the LED, and that was it for the kit. And so I was interested in electronics, but I didn't do anything with it until much later. And then I picked up the uh, Forrest Mims yes. Radio Shack books, and those are awesome because it's, it's very accessible. He tells you only what you need to know. And then from there, you can do, you can, you can take those blocks and, and reconfigure them and make things. And so that's, that's really where I started becoming a hobbyist. I subscribed to all the, so 
this is, you know, I'm old enough that that was before the internet. <laughs> yes. And so to get information, you had to subscribe to all these magazines, right. like Nuts and Bolts and Circuit Seller Inc. and mm -hmm. things like that. And so that's how I got the information. And actually, that's how I found Mouser. I think it was by an ad in the back of, of Nuts and Bolts. Like, hey, you want parts? We have parts. Do you have any idea what your first parts order was? Do you remember? Probably it was passives. So it was yeah. probably resistors. Sure. Um, and the excitement of when that box arrived and you're able to actually start building something? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, you know, it's always like Christmas. Yeah. You order something, you know. And, and back in those days, I had to order, uh, on, like, call them up. Call them up with a with credit card, <laughs> you know, and, and you would have the catalog. Right. First you had to get the catalog. Yep. Then you would have to call them up. So, um, but it was great. It was really good really great experience as as a buyer as a as a user but so if uh, if someone comes up to you and says hey I know you build a lot of robots and you know I've flashed a few LEDs and I want to just try you know something making something that moves do you have any suggestions on where they should start oh yeah um, kids these days kids these days <laughs> they have the internet you could type into a search engine you could type into you could type into YouTube <laughs> I how do I make an LED light Right. And someone will explain it to you in very simple terms. I mean, that's that's what it's that's the power of of living in the future, of having information. Yeah. Is anything that you can think of that you want to learn about, you can you can get those resources now. Back in my day, <laughs> you it was harder, you know, but nowadays it's so much better. And so my advice is whatever you're interested in, whatever whatever you want to do, if you want to make a motor move, these days you can you can buy an Arduino. It's all open source. All the code is freely available online. You can get a, a motor shield. You can buy a motor. You can buy it all mouser. They'll send it to you in a box. <laughs> you, you download your code from the internet and you've got a moving motor. It's that great. It's a brave new world. It's an awesome new world. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing with us today. It's uh, great to hear your story, and uh, we're so happy to hear you promoting uh, people getting into electronics, people sharing their thoughts and ideas, maybe through open source or even just trying it out. And uh, we look for great things from you with uh, Mauser's innovation program. All right. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you. It was fine before you guys showed up. You fine before you hackaday guys. That's right. <laughs> you know the TV be gone. This is the wireless radio be gone. Yeah. <laughs> it's a new thing you're testing out. I understand. It's.